We've talked about Calyx OS, an Android ROM that maintains the security model of your phone while offering privacy. What we haven't mentioned much is Calyx OS being managed by the Calyx Institute, who has a long history in the privacy world with one of the coolest things they do being this, a truly unlimited 4G LTE hotspot that you can carry everywhere you go for likely less than your phone bill or home internet. The Calyx Institute is an organization dedicated towards internet accessibility, privacy, security, and digital rights. It was founded by Nicholas Merrill, who was served a gag order from the FBI, which he sued in retaliation. We just posted an interview with Nicholas on Surveillance Report, our podcast, where he shares his story and dives into the origins of Calyx. It is phenomenal to hear him speak. I cannot recommend it more. He's great. Fast forward to 2020, Calyx does research, develops Calyx OS, offers these hotspots as part of their membership, which you can pay for annually or quarterly. They also host Tor nodes, a free VPN, and even a Jitsi instance. Everything being free with the exception of the hotspots, which is their main funding source as it comes along with the membership. Just to note in advance, this hotspot is currently exclusive to the US market, and the highest tier membership I currently have is no longer available, though the cheaper one is still there and the more expensive one will likely someday get a valid replacement. So let's finally talk about it. I got the MiFi 8000, which supports up to 15 devices with a rated battery life of 24 hours. This used to be through Sprint, but is now part of a dual company configuration where it cycles between Sprint and T-Mobile thanks to the recent merger. It supports external antennas for improved reception, a touchscreen, USB-C quick charging, and it's relatively compact. It fits in a backpack pocket, the center console of your car, or even your pocket. The only gripe I've experienced on the hardware front is it can get pretty darn hot, so much so that it's not recommended to charge it 24-7 while it's being used. But outside that, it's a solid device and software is pretty much on the same page. You can customize the network settings, view all devices, and receive OTA software updates and a lot more other stuff. It supports USB tethering as well, which is a great perk. But how does this tie into the real world experience? I'm not exaggerating here when I say this little guy has changed my life. Uh, my job relies on uploading and downloading gigabytes of video content, making high bandwidth internet a necessity in my workflow. For this reason, even if I have everything on a laptop, I can't work on the go because of limited data plans. And pandemic aside, my lifestyle forces me to be home because I have reliance on good and unthrottled internet. Well, no longer. I have removed my desktop from my workflow and can do anything on my laptop and tablet with a couple missing pieces, the Calyx hotspot and a 12 volt charger. I can work from almost anywhere in the United States. I can literally drive around the country and work without a hiccup. Day to day though, this has allowed me to do more work at the park, where I just let my dog run around instead of being cooped up at home all day. I downgraded my phone plan to the bare minimum to save money. I've even considered ditching home Wi-Fi altogether and using the hotspot all day. Now, the main question on your mind is likely, what the hell is the speed of this tiny little thing? In my personal best case scenarios, this little guy can get 150 megabits per second down and about 10 up, though the average if I were to drive around town would be between 30 to 70 down and about 3 to 5 up, though this varies a lot. What's interesting is I've driven down a busy street and pulled over every quarter mile or so, and got drastically different speeds along just the same street. So the reception can be finicky, though it does seem to be better since the migration to T-Mobile. Either way, the better solution to fix this for improved reception in a bad area is an external antenna, which you can get separately. Bottom line, this thing is versatile. If you're trying to save pennies every month, this is a way to eliminate both a cellular data plan and home Wi-Fi, cutting out two monthly subscriptions, or maybe it's a dedicated device for your RV. Maybe it's a security and privacy tool. We're gonna to talk about that very soon. Or maybe it's a way to get the cheaper device model without the cell antenna. Looking at you, Apple. Overall, I'm just thrilled with this thing and I can't really go without it anymore, but let's talk privacy and security. So why does this fit here? For some, it doesn't. It's exclusively a method of getting good internet anywhere you go for cheap. 
And that's fine if that's your use case, but there can be some security and privacy perks. For the security front, this is a good way to never have to use public Wi-Fi again, where you control what devices are on your own self-owned portable router. I have much more peace of mind using this than the Togo's Wi-Fi. For the privacy front, this still sends all of your web traffic to a cell company. There's really no way around that, and that's not an issue exclusive to Calyx. Even burner phones that are completely anonymous don't protect the raw information processed by the cell company. If you're trying to prevent this and make your traffic unreadable, use a VPN or Tor and don't use SMS or phone calls, but rather something end-to-end -end encrypted like Signal. However, similar to burner phones, the Calyx hotspot is purchased directly through Calyx without needing any real personal information. You can pay in Bitcoin, give them a pseudo email, and ship it to a private mailbox. So the indirect cell company involved in giving you service doesn't know who you are. And if you're using a VPN and using encrypted communication, there's not much they can even snoop on. So this is a valid tool that can be used to improve your security and privacy. I will say this is kind of like Signal and Brave, where it improves convenience, it improves your life, and it improves privacy in the same package, which is kind of a unicorn thing to happen. But like most tools, it's not an all-in-one solution, and you should be aware of its limitations. So let's put everything back together. This thing is awesome, and I wish I discovered it a long time ago. One of the most exciting things about Calyx to me is they're building an ecosystem. You can order a hotspot for internet, use that hotspot to order a pixel for Calyx OS, use Calyx VPN to protect your traffic through the hotspot, and then you can use their Jitsi instance for meetings. The Calyx Institute is doing all this fantastic work, and they really are doing a great job of bringing privacy to the masses. I definitely recommend you check out their website and compare the membership options. You're not just getting a crazy cool toy here, but you're also donating to a fantastic cause, and they use pretty much all of their funds towards their causes. If you want to learn more about Calyx and who is running the show, definitely 100% check out our interview with Nicholas. He's a great dude, and I had a blast talking to him, so much so that we got a little bit carried away on the time. He shared his story about receiving an NSA gag order. So here's a short clip. Go watch the rest of it if you're interested. Here's this like gray-haired older man in a trench coat who pulls out this wallet with this huge FBI ID in it and stuff. I mean, it was like, like in the movies. And I read this letter and it says that I have to give them all this data and it says that I can't tell any person that they've uh, visited me or asked for the data. If you enjoyed this review, let us know by dropping a like below, subscribing and hitting the bell icon for our future videos, and if you want to mingle with other privacy advocates, join our communities below. They're all waiting for you. I want to thank you for watching and have a great rest of your day.